Father at Center. Um, so we're here to thank the artist and, and have an unveiling of the works as well. So, right beside me here is, is Shane Wilson, as many of you know. He is um, a longtime newcomer, although he's defected to uh, the Lord of Vancouver Island recently, although he's still definitely got a strong connection here, and we're really excited to have this piece of our in our collection to, to share with you and, and new partners. Um, Shane is a master carver in antler, bone, horn, mountain tusk, stone, and, and now bronze. This is actually my first um, time seeing his bronze work, so it's, it's quite exciting. Um, Shane has donated candlelights, which is just around the corner. Um, this piece has been in our collection since uh, December, and kind of just quietly put it out there, and so now it's kind of our official, look, here it is. And a brand new piece that's literally just finished this year, um, which is the self-portrait, which is on the plinth, um, and that's muscox, horn, bronze, and jade. Shane is gonna talk about each of the pieces individually. Um, after I'm done here. This piece here, the, the with the moose antlers is actually going to Dehane Junction and we all are just getting a, a lucky oh, sneak ahead. peek. This official unveiling is on Saturday at Dehane Junction. So, let me hand it over to Shane and, and just say more than anything, maybe we can give him a round of applause. It's just a really big thank you. Shane is tremendously kind, humble, <laughs> and super talented, and we're, we're really excited to, to be working with you. So, thank you. Art, at least art as I know it, comes out of the right brain. So it's, it's not really based with, it's not language based. It's, it's, it's somehow there's concepts and ideas that percolate in our right brains that come out as images, that come out as flashes of inspiration, that come out as all kinds of different things. And my art is really, at least the art that you're seeing here tonight, is primarily that. It's kind of a right brainish kind of stuff. And then what happens is after, as you create it, you're creating it and sometimes you don't know why. But as you go along, your left brain kind of figures out what you're doing. And so you put a kind of a narrative to what you're seeing. And a friend of mine calls it art bullshit. It's another <laughs> artist. But anyway, he, uh, I think he's wrong. I think what it is is you're actually trying to describe what it is that you're doing as an artist. And so I'll try to do that a little bit tonight. So anyway, this is moose antler. The most often question asked about this is, is it all one piece? And it is. It's just, it's hard to look like a bunch of different shards. But I call it candle ice. You know, in the Yukon in the springtime, when you're walking along the river and the ice is sort of rotting or breaking down, and the cool, tinkly stuff. So that's what I, I sort of gave the name candle ice after. Okay, let's move on to the other uh, piece that's donated to the art center. This is muskox horn, and the skull is a wolf skull uh, made out of bronze and carved in an abstract fashion. And it's on a, a plexiglass, plexiglass pillar, and it's sitting on a jade holder, hovering above the jade. And it took uh, about eight or nine hundred hours to make over two years. It's, it's the most difficult material I've ever carved because it's actually composed of hairs. Like all horn is basically hair that's kind of glued together. But it's, it's almost uh, like the hairs are like uh, strands of steel. Well, what does it mean? Well, I, I, as I looked at this over the, over the years before I did it, I thought, well, it's kind of like life, you know, in a way like the muskox. You start here, and you see it's kind of black and small, and it's like being born. You know, you're born out of darkness, right? And uh, then you sort of start to grow and develop, and you, you have thoughts and ideas, you accomplish things, and you come to middle age, and you have a bit of a break, you know? the midlife crisis or whatever you want to call it and uh, where you where you reassess your priorities in life and you buy a Porsche or something like that <laughs> and then uh, the second half of life is really for you I mean you know you, you decided what you are about to do all the rest and, and the second half of life is is you writing your own rules and doing your own thing and so on and so forth and then it goes and then of course you die at the end and so that's kind of life so that's why that's and, and it's a psychological self portrait because all of these little shapes and wheels and swirls and stuff all mean something to me. But I'm not going to actually go through that because that would be boring. It really doesn't matter. The point is that it's uh, it's it's the it's the stuff of, of 
life. And the, I left some of the raw, I, I polished it up a bit, but it's basically what the actual surface of the heart looks like. Because in life there's always those things you aren't proud of, things that, you know, the, the dross of life, you know, like when a glacier goes down it throws out rocks to the side. Well, this is kind of the, the lateral moraines of life, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so that's represented by kind of the raw and then the real stuff is kind of in the And then on top of that is another meeting. Uh, as an artist, uh, you leave two things, really. You leave your heart, and you leave your, your bones when you die. It's a bit more than but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of what artists think about, you know, mortality and so on and so forth. And so this is me, like my bones, because you leave your, your it was a human skull initially, but it was too much. So it became a wolf skull because it actually looks a little better. It looks like kind of like a bird or a pterodactyl or something. Um, and it's meant to be on an angle. It's looking forward to the future slightly. But uh, the other thing about your bones is that if you study, they study people's bones and they see about their life and see what they age, how they live and so on. So you can see the kind of abstract kinds of stuff that are built into the bones as well. And this would be the art that you leave behind. Or in the, the case of, well, your life work, whatever that might be. Like a, a, a Porsche? <laughs> Well, I actually don't have a Porsche. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always hope. <laughs> and um, any questions about this one? What about the jade? It actually goes kind of well, and I designed the, the bronze to have a patina that was kind of like jade. It's kind of dark, so it, it picks up these colors, but it's also got the green, so it picks up the jade. And it's like, you know, it's, uh, you're grounded in light. Okay. So did you make that just like a cast? Yeah, yeah. I had an actual wolf skull, and I took a mold off the wolf skull, and then I poured wax into the mold, and I carved the wax, and I sent the wax to the foundry. The foundry turned it into bronze, sent it back to me, and then I carved it up a bit better, put the patina on it. This one is going, uh, it's part of a series of skulls. I did a bunch of bronze skulls uh, back uh, years ago and do donated them to construction for the work. Wolf skulls, bear skulls, a couple of human skulls, uh, you know, etc. Et 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 and they but they wanted a loose skull. So this is the final piece for them, but it's not only a loose skull, it's a loose skull with card and And this is a this is definitely a sculpture that, that came out of the right brain to begin with. And it sort of slowly started to take shape as it went along. I call it Gaia. And I don't know how many of you have read uh, but the whole premise is that the Earth is a living organism that can self-regulate. And uh, in a sense, at this point, we're going to have a virus, so the Earth is going to be heated up so that it fills us off so that we don't go down over hundreds of thousands of years. That's the basic premise. But what he says is that if we're smart, that we can learn how to coexist with the Earth instead of being parasitic to it. And this is about coexistence. The essential point is that it's meant to be a representation of the Perhaps the Earth of the future, where we are a conscious partner living in a symbiotic relationship. That's it.